What would you do if you had an extra $25,000 of business credit at your disposal? Well, I need you to make that decision and figure out because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I hope you're all ready because we're going into the Navy Fed play and how you can get $25,000 of business funding super easy without waiting a bunch of time. First of all, this business credit, man, for me, coming from where I came from, listen, I'm from Philly, single mom household, man, and we grind it literally paycheck to paycheck. And I watched her, you know, just put it, put all her effort into essentially just making sure I was good and not having the ability to do what we wanted after that, right? We had to lock in on the essentials. And really, that was my motivation, man, to take things to the next level. That was my motivation to go ahead first, go to school, get a degree, degree in finance, and jump into that corporate world, right? And that was a huge accomplishment. But when I became an adult and I actually started working my own nine to five, I realized, man, I'm getting paid every other week, check to check. And after I paid my bills, I literally didn't have enough money to do what I wanted, right? I was still struggling after I paid my bills after every check. That's what we call the rat race. You're literally running in a race just to get your next check, just to pay off those bills, just to do it all over again. Let me know in the comments if y'all know exactly what I mean. I know I'm not the only bag chaser who has experienced this, right? But listen, the beauty of it is, as I struggle, as I grind it, then I had to change my perspective. I had to change my mindset. And in doing that, I started to learn more about business credit. I started to learn, you know, about leveraging other people's money, starting businesses and the benefits that came with not just relying on the nine to five. And that is literally like my goal and my purpose behind why I create content about what I'm doing, you know, and just sharing my experiences because I want you guys to understand it's more ways to get up out of that nine to five grind, right? And this is something that literally we can all do. This is something that, you know, once you start to lock in and understand what, is really going on out here and get up out of that matrix life opens up for you so much like literally right now i'm sitting in bali indonesia a few years ago i didn't even know where bali was man this was all a dream but being able to lock in on entrepreneurship on leveraging business credit on starting businesses my toro business my real estate business it has literally opened up doors i would never imagine and guess what y'all as i'm in bali i'm still getting payments from my Toro car fleet. I'm still getting my rental uh, property payments, right? My tenants are still paying their rent. I'm still running up a bag halfway across the world. And I still get to tap in with my bag chaser community and give you all this sauce as well. And literally that is the power of business credit. So first thing first, what's the first thing you need to do to run this Navy Fed play? Well, of course, the first thing is you're going to need a business entity, right? You're going to need an actual business. So my preference as far as other business is a LLC. Um, there are plenty of business entities, but for myself, for my own um, business credit methods, I love an LLC because they're very easy to make. They're not expensive. They don't take a lot of filing, literally. Um, you can get an LLC in a matter of not only minutes to start, but just a couple of days to actually get it going and lock in some business credit, y'all. Right. So the first thing you need you need to run this Navy Fed play is going to be a business entity. All right. And when we start to go create this LLC, you can literally do this at your Secretary of State website. Uh, if you don't know what your Secretary of State website address is, literally just go to Google type in your state and then type in secretary of state and it'll take you right there now when we start to uh create an llc a lot of people a lot of questions that i get is you know what business do i start or um like what do i name my business now i'll tell you there is something that you need to avoid when it comes to creating your llc and that is your high risk industries high risk industries are essentially um, types and forms of businesses that banks won't lend to. 
and they're not going to lend to it because they see these type of businesses as higher risk to default on loans. And if they don't give you one, they want, might just flat out um, deny you. And if not, if they do approve you, you're probably going to get a lower line than if you had, you know, a better business entity. So first thing we want to do is avoid high risk industries and a few high risk industries just to note are going to be things like car rental business, right? Real estate investing, trucking, real estate brokerages, property managers, uh, things like uh, construction companies, uh, funeral services, fitness, recreation, uh, video rentals, anything short term rentals. So definitely anything that has short term rental attached to it. Um, things that you're investing in properties, you want to stay away from those, especially in the description and the name of your LLC, because this is going to, like I said, bring up a red flag and it can automatically get you, uh, you know, declined when it comes to this business credit. Got my guy Isaiah in the building. I see you. Irvin, I see you. Simon, I see you. So. Simon, you bring up an actual great point. Not only do you want to stay away as far as your business type from high risk industries, you don't want to name the business in your uh, actual business name. So what I mean is, you know, you don't have to do Ralph car rental, right? You don't have to do Ralph real estate investing. What I like to do is keep it very general, right? So um, there are certain things. One, I like to use either like a last name or a broader term to start with and then you can always use a suffix like group firm enterprise right so you have like jarvis enterprise you have the jarvis group there are you know a lot of ways for you to make more of a general name or just a general llc and be in a better position to start getting business funding all right so first thing first start that business I love a LLC. Go to your secretary of state website and avoid these high risk industries because you're going to bring up an instant red flag with the lenders. And of course, you know, a lot of us may have already started our business. We may have already had a high risk industry. So, yes, you are able to go back and change the type of business and change your business description. Um, so if you have uh, it in your name, if you have it filed with your secretary of state, first thing you're going to need to do is make an amendment with your secretary of state. Then you're going to have to do an amendment with the IRS. And essentially what this is going to do is going to change your NIAX code, N-A-I-C-S, NIAX. Um, it's essentially what lenders and other businesses use as an identifying number to know what type of business you have. All right, so you want to make sure you update your secretary of state, update the EIN, uh, update your IRS who holds your EIN, and make sure your NIAX code is changed to a non high risk industry. All right, so right now you got your LLC. Now, when we have our LLC, then you have to get, as I just said, uh, mentioned your EIN that's your employer identification number. That's essentially going to be your business's form of its own social security number and going, to, and going to be how the IRS tracks your business. And you're going to need this to do your business taxes. This is free. It's really easy to do. Essentially, all you have to do is go to irs.gov and you can go ahead and apply for a new EIN for your business. Super easy. It's going to be your second step. Number three, we have to actually not just have a business right and and have a non high risk industry business but you need to structure your business and what structuring your business is is building the elements of your business that is essentially going to show lenders that you're well established that you're an official business and it's going to make your business look way more lendable right so after you create your llc now we're going to get into the structuring process Number thing, number one thing when you start to think about structuring your, your business is having a business address. Now, I get a whole lot of comments. I get a whole lot of feedback saying, hey, don't you get your, your business address when you file your LLC? Yes. But I got to tell you guys, you know, that we're going to start our business first. Now, a great way to get a business address 
because I don't want you to use your home address. Because imagine this, you know, somebody's looking to borrow $20,000 from you for their business and you go to go look up their business in Google Maps and it's a mom house, right? You don't want to use your crib for your business address. What you want to do is go ahead and get a virtual office. Virtual office is essentially a uh, distributor like Regis who actually has big corporate buildings and they will allow you to use their address for your business. Not only that, uh, they'll pick up your mail. So they'll accept your mail. You can go pick it up and they'll even send it out to your home address. So avoid using your home address and go ahead and get a virtual address for your business. And you can use a um, provider like Regis to do this. Regis is my favorite one. I have multiple virtual addresses with them. Yes, sir. So, okay. So Simon actually just said, you know, I never heard of that code. I've been in business for 36 years. Shout out to you, Simon. Almost 40 years in a game. Let's get it. I have over seven trucks and I'm still paying a higher interest rate on finance. All right. So, um, like I said, the NIAX code is something that's identifying your business. So if you've been in business for 40 years, you probably, you know, have a NIAX code. That's something in the trucking industry, right? Now, you may be able to kind of get around this high risk industry um, issue with your business because you've been in business for almost four decades and you're long established and you have a proven track record that um, you can essentially get into uh, lending and paying it back on time. Right. So shout out to you for that, for sure. All right. Now, when we start to talk about um, the virtual addresses, as I said, stay away from your home address. Stay away from P.O. boxes. I wouldn't use things like uh, UPS or your mailbox or your uh, local post office for your address either, because, as I said, lenders can look this up and easily see that it's not a real business. Go ahead and get that virtual office. You can get it for like between 50 and 100 dollars a month. It's sweet. Next thing we want to do, let's go ahead and get a toll free number for your business. Now, I know a lot of people, even myself, when I first started, I used my own um, phone number. But what our goal here is to separate your business from your personal. So you can literally get a toll free 1-800 number. And that's what these lenders call. That's what people call. And it still can route back to your personal line. But as I said, we're structuring our business. So not only are we building an official business, but we're giving off the vibes of an official business. And when lenders look us up, everything looks good. You can literally use a service like Grasshopper freedom voice or capture to get your um toll free number easy right next thing on the list is we need to build our digital footprint for our business guys it's all about structuring and making it look good so first thing here you're going to go ahead and get an official email right a lot of people start off with a google uh address a, a gmail account listen let's skip over that and actually use a dot com it's called a domain, right? So you can easily go to GoDaddy or Google Suite and get a .com. So instead of, you know, uh, Jarvis Group at gmail.com, now it's Jarvis Group, um, Ralph at Jarvis Group .com, right? So that's way more official when you're walking into this bank, you're giving them an official email address. As I said, you can get that from GoDaddy and Google Suite will set that up for you. You can literally do that in like 10 minutes and it costs about $15 a year. Sweet. All right. So next thing we have is setting up a website as well. Literally, guys, um, you can set up a one page website. Places like Wix, Shopify, WordPress, they'll or even like uh, open space. They will allow you to set up a website literally um, in a couple minutes. And it doesn't have to be five, 10 pages. It can be a one page website with your business description, with your email address, uh, with your telephone number and your physical address, just saying, uh, you know, this is my business. So when lenders look it up, you look, all right, guys. So now you have your digital footprint with your business email, you have uh, your website and your domain set up. Now, the next thing I want you guys to do is list your business in the directories, right? So this is essentially going to 411 having your business in those yellow pages because once again when lenders look you up you want to be able to be seen and this is easy it's free you can literally do it at listyourself.net for free 
411 and the business pages at listyourself.net for free. Now you use all of that information we just used to structure, right? You, you put your virtual address, your phone number, your website, your .com, your email address, you put that all on a directory. So now this like literally you just built a, a, a well-established business in a matter of a few days. So now um, we're, we're pretty much getting there as far as structuring your business, right? Now, after we have those things, we have our virtual address, we have our email, we have our toll-free number, we have our website, we listed ourselves in our business directories. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and apply for our Dun and Bradstreet number. Dun and Bradstreet is essentially the biggest business credit bureau. And um, we know a lot about, you know, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. Experian and Equifax also has a business credit arm, but we want to be um, in the, you know, in, a, in the industry for the biggest credit bureau, which is DNB, Dun & Bradstreet. This is also super easy. All you need to do is go to dnb.com and you can literally sign up for your Dun & Bradstreet for free. But I saved this one for almost last because you need to structure your business and have all those things in line before you, you know, jump into um getting your done in brass street yes sir so this is business credit checklist don't worry man i'm gonna have this laid out for y'all and i actually got a resource coming up that y'all you know not only just this video and all my content but it's going to be other resources um another resource that i dropped that's going to literally lay this out for you step by step by step by step but i want to you know i wanted to go go live with y'all and go through this with y'all directly um, and also specifically talk about Navy Fed, right? So after we get our done in Bradstreet, once you apply, like I said, it's free. You'll literally get this back in a few days after they verify that information. Now, after we have all these things, you have a structured business, guys. You literally just took these six to seven steps to go from forming an LLC in one day to literally within one to two weeks having a fully structured business. And now that you have a fully structured business, it's ready to, we're ready to run the play. So now let's get into the Navy Fed sauce because something that a lot of people don't realize is that um, a lot of lenders, they don't, even, they don't even recognize your business as being formed or official until you have a business bank account, right? So the, so the first thing we do after we get a structured business is go for our business bank account. And this is what leads us to Navy Fed. This is probably my favorite uh, bank or my favorite credit union when it comes to not only new businesses, um, but new entrepreneurs and the first business bank account that you start with because they are not only the biggest credit union in the country, but they are infamous for being more lenient to new business and more uh, lenient to borrowers with lower credit scores, right? So I know as we get out the nine to five grind, as we lock in, you know, our credit score may not be the best. Take this opportunity not only to structure your business, but to also start working on your personal credit as well. Because as we run this play, all of these things are just going to line you up to get an even bigger bag, right? So let's get to Navy Fed. And I get a lot of comments about, you know, uh, don't you got to be in the armed services or, you know, um, family member? So the answer to that is yes. You know, you do have to um, uh, be affiliated. But that's flexible. There are so many ways for you to be able to get in Navy Fed. Not only if you're in the armed services, if someone in your family is in the armed services, right? So those are the two most prominent ways. But also, if someone you live with has Navy Fed already, right? So this is the play that, you know, me and a lot of, uh, you know, my bag chasers have used to get in Navy Fed because we either live with or know someone with Navy Fed. And when you get Navy Fed, they essentially give you a um, access code. So, you know, if, if your family member, brother, sister, um, um, mom, dad, right, already has Navy Fed. And what I've seen is so many people have Navy Fed. Like you definitely know someone um, live with some money who can get you um, the access code. So that's essentially what I did. Once you get the access code, you're able to from someone, you're able to use that to get into Navy Fed. Uh, like I said, run the play the right way. Um, and you'll be able to get in. So, you know, take that and be able to open this Navy Fed relationship, right? 
Now, I will say, when it comes to Navy Fed, getting in the system and getting the business bank account started is going to be the hardest part about it. And I understand why they make it like this, because essentially, when you get in the system, you're golden, guys. Once you're in, you're in. Once you're in, you're in, man. So um, let's talk about that, y'all. A few things, and this is for some of my bag chasers who may not have, you know, um, the best credit score, because as I said, you can literally get this business credit without having the best credit score. But there are a few things that I want you to do first. And that is starting to build the relationship bank. Uh, they're starting to build the relationship with the bank. And if you guys have seen any of my content before, you know I'm big. I'm big on relationship banking. And essentially, what that is is having multiple products with this lender to be able to strengthen that relationship. If you, you know, might not have the best personal credit, right? So when we first get into Navy Fed, I want you guys to do a few things. First of all, I definitely want you to open up a personal checking and savings account. That's going to give you, you know, your first data point as far as a relationship. And let me know, y'all, as we uh, as we going through this, let me know in the comments if you guys have questions, whatever, you know, whatever you guys are thinking about. I'm definitely going to hit on all the topics to get in uh, to the Navy Fed uh, play. But let me know in the comments if you have questions. Right. So. As we start to take on relationship banking, we now have a personal checking and savings account with Navy Fed. Now, the next thing, depending on where you're at, I would say, you know, if you're under probably a 680, you want to take these steps. A great data point is to go ahead and set up your direct deposit with Navy Fed. So you have a nine to five, you can go ahead and set up that direct, direct deposit right into Navy Fed. So now you have some money flowing through your personal accounts, right? And not only that, but now you, you added another data point to your relationship with Navy Fed. All right. Two data points. We're building our relationship banking um, loyalty and trust with Navy Fed. The next thing that I want you to go ahead and do, um, you can do either a, a secure or an unsecure personal credit card with Navy Fed. When I first got in Navy Fed, the first one I did was actually uh, the um, Navy Fed Amex, Amex card. And a great thing about Navy Fed, like I said, you, you know, you can have a lower credit score. I've seen people all the way down to like, you know, 600, 620 get, a, get approved. Now, I will say if you're in the 600 to 650, don't start out with the Navy Fed Amex card. You can literally start with like um, a secured card. So go ahead, you know, put a couple hundred dollars down on a secured card. And this is essentially building the trust, right? Because now you playing ball with Navy Fed is going to make them want to play ball with you a little bit more. So go ahead and apply for a, a personal credit card. And if your credit score is below, like I said, like a 650, go ahead and grab a secure card first. Eugene, Eugene said, I got a secure Navy card and I'm stuck from there. All right. Now, now listen to these, listen to these plays, because this is what we're going to do. You can still have a secure card and still run some of these plays. All right. So. We got our secure card, right? Um, or if you got maybe over six fifty, you can go um, for one of the one of the other cards that they have as well. Now, after this, and this this is maybe for somebody in uh, like Eugene's position where they kind of been stuck with that secure card, you can also do a pledge loan. You can do a pledge loan with Navy Fed, which is essentially just like your secure card, where you give them some funds and they give you a card back. You can literally give them funds and they'll give you a loan based on the amount that you use or based on the amount that you give them. Now, um, you want to utilize this a little bit. So in the, in the first month or two, go ahead and use like, you know, 10 to 20 percent of this amount when you get your pledge loan. And like I said, what, what is this doing? This is essentially you putting your money into the system of Navy Fed because they're a bank, they're a credit union. They're only using our money to lend out to other people and make money off of it. Right. So this is, like I said, building the trust. So now you have before we even get to the business account, we have some great data points over and you can do this in maybe a one to two month period. Right. We have a personal checking and savings account. Um, we have a uh, direct deposit being set up to Navy Fed. If need be, we grab the secure card. And if we are definitely lower in the credit score tiers, 
Now we have a secure pledge loan with Navy Fed. And those are great data points to go ahead and start this business banking relationship. Exactly, Eugene. So, you know, those are four things. If you're under that 650, those are four things you definitely need to do. And not only, you know, starting with this business banking relationship, but as I said before, I want you, I want you guys to start working on your personal credit as well. Whether it be you doing it personally or hiring a credit card company, go ahead and get started with getting those leaks off, getting those derogatories off and cleaning up your personal credit profile. Because like I said, if this is going to take you maybe one to three months, then literally you can start getting your personal credit prepared to run this play. And when the two ends meet, now you all ready to get this business credit bag. All right. So now you got these personal data points with um, Navy Fed. Let's jump into the actual uh, business play. Right. So at this point, we have a structure LLC and we have a good relationship personally with Navy Fed. The next thing I want you to do is open a business banking account with Navy Fed. And it's super easy. Um, you have a portal now that you're in Navy Fed. Uh, what you can do is go ahead and download the application straight off of uh, Navy Fed's website. Just literally Google Navy Fed business banking relationship or business bank account, I'm sorry, and download that application, fill it out. Now, here's the trick, y'all. Literally the hardest part about getting the uh, Navy Fed business credit is getting approved for the business bank account. And this is why I uh, stress not only structuring your business, but staying away from high risk industries because Navy Fed is infamous for denying people based on their business type. If you have a car rental business outright, that's the only thing you do and you're leading with that, you're denied. Real estate investing business, you're denied. Uh, anything that has to do with like to tobacco, uh, guns, um, trucking, you're denied. So make sure we stay away from these high risk industries, because once we fill out the Navy Fed business banking app, we're just going to go ahead, call them up and they're going to walk you through this entire process. Right. They're going to walk you through this entire process, download, complete the online application, you upload it to the portal. Now, I will say. Um, me, all the bag chasers that I talk to as far as uh, this process, you're going to be on the phone with Navy Fed for probably one to two hours. And they're doing this because they want to understand, you know, what your business is and they want to make sure they're allowing an entity that's doing good business into their ecosystem. So this is kind of like a grill session. So be prepared for this, right? Be prepared to be on the phone with a Navy Fed rep from one to two hours. And, um, you know, they're going to ask you all about your business. What do you do? You know, where are you located? Pretty much everything we went through in structuring the business, they're going to they're going to ask you about. Now, as I said, you get through this, um, tell them why you're opening the account. Right. You want to build that relationship. You love Navy Fed. You you already have four or five personal uh, personal banking relations with Navy Fed and you want to expand that over to your business side. That's literally a great way to open their eyes and say, OK, that, that makes complete sense. Tell them about the nature of your business, what you're doing. Right. And that's going to lead you into being in a good standing to be able to get this business bank account. Now, the minimum deposit is two hundred and fifty dollars, but um, you can do the minimum. But the more you put in there is going to be the better. Right. Now, if you can get through this grill session one or two hours, literally, you can get this business bank account open that same day. All right. Now, once you have the business bank account, you're in the system, baby. We there. We there. The hard part is done. We structured our, we started the business. We structured the business. We elevated our relationship with Navy Fed. And then we took that relationship to, to the next level by opening up a business bank account. Let me know in the comments if y'all with me, man. I know, um, you know, those are, that's about eight to 10 steps, right? But we had to get those things out the way to be able to get into Navy Fed. So let me know in the comments. Let me know if you're with me. Let me know, you know, if y'all got your notepads out and y'all y'all soaking up the sauce. Let's get it. All right. So Isaiah said, I tried it and I got denied due to the fact that I told him it's a car business. As I said, y'all, this is this is what Navy Fed is known for. They are literally known 
for um, denying people even business bank, not even just denying the business credit, but they won't even let you get in the doors with certain industries. And that's because they know once you're in the door, you got a good chance of running up a bag and getting approved for a lot of these um, uh, products that they offer, right? So as I said, we want to stay away from car businesses. We want to stay away from trucking businesses. Uh, we want to stay definitely credit repair, right? Um, credit repair businesses, um, anything that has to do with, like I said, uh, firearms, tobacco, stay away from that, guys, because they're not even going to let you in the building. Eugene, essentially, you know, uh, if you don't do an amendment and change up your um, business type, which I know that can be a lot, you know, I've, you know, I've seen people run into this before. You can just start a new LLC. We just went through the eight to 10 steps. Make sure you do it right from the very beginning and just retry the process. Right. You know, if we if we if we fall, just dust ourselves off and we're going to try again. But now, you know, right now you get the information that, that we want to stay away from that from the very beginning. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. So next thing, next thing, you you run you run this play and you got your your personal relationship with Navy Fed, your structure business, and now you got approved for your business bank account because you're not a high risk industry. And you know they let you in. So this is essentially when that business credit place uh, really begins. Now what this is is essentially the. Um, Navy Fed Go Biz Rewards card. This is what you want to apply for. This card comes in a Visa and a MasterCard. Uh, to me, it doesn't doesn't really matter, you know, uh, which one you get. I think I have the MasterCard. But the way to do this is the same way as opening the business bank account. On the business side, you're going to see uh, a trend of essentially you're uploading, you're downloading documents, filling them out, then you're uploading to the portal. And this is going to trigger a representative reaching out to you. So let's take a look. You can actually find the um, uh, the application for the GoBiz Rewards card right on the website. Let's take a look. Let's see. All right. So if you guys can see it, let me know. Let me know if you can see it. I actually just brought up the Gold Biz Rewards credit card. As you can see, it is right on the Navy Fed website. Uh, we got the link up here. Let's go ahead and drop the link in the chat. I got y'all. What's good, Tay? I see you. Said my branch didn't ask me any questions. We started talking about life and it took 10 minutes for me to open a business biz bank account you know what's crazy i get this a lot and the same thing happened to me and my cousin um a lot of times you 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 might just get somebody super nice on that line and a lot of times i do you know and once you go into your business they ask you about the nature of your business what you do why you want to open up a business account if you just tell them you know tell them something along the lines of what i just said then it's an it's a human on the other side they literally are like and this is what happened to me as well they're like wow that's amazing um you know we definitely want to help you and at the end of it they kind of start becoming your friend right right so uh that right at the bottom that's going to be the link to get into the uh gold biz rewards business credit card as you guys can see on the screen right oh that's the other one as you guys can see on the screen right here but I do want to show y'all something that Tay said, right? Let's see. We have it right here. Oh, man. We in Bali. One thing about Bali, man, it's going to rain every day. So I actually got a few raindrops coming down, but don't, don't worry, y'all. We're we going to lock in. We got a couple more minutes left on the play. But Tay said my branch didn't even ask me any questions. We started talking about life and it took 10 minutes. If you got everything structured, if you already have this information going in, you have nothing to worry about as far as getting denied for the business bank account. And like I said, like Tay said, you know, they're, they're humans on the other end. You actually, you know, uh, start bonding and, and becoming friends. And that just that just gives you even more uh, bonus points for being able to run this play. All right. So at this point, now we got our business bank account and we're ready to go ahead and apply for the GoBiz credit card. So 
let's go ahead we're going to log in then we're going to go to the website and as you can see here there's literally start an application button right the website it'll tell you all about um the business credit card a few cool things about this uh no annual fee you do get a little bit of rewards points and i'll say as you start to build your business credit profile um, there are definitely a lot of other cards that give you better rewards than this, but this is, like I said, one of the ones that, you know, I'm just saying start out with, y'all. Um, so not the biggest rewards, but you you are going to get a little something, um, a, a pretty decent APR. This isn't a 0% interest card to start out with. You know, we talked about in other videos, we talked about Truist. Um, you know, I got some other ones like Key Bank that are coming up that will give you 0% interest between 6 to 12 months. Unfortunately, the GoBiz Rewards card isn't that type of card. But like I said, it's going to be way easier to get than every other card, right? This is for my for my new businesses, for my new entrepreneurs who might not even have any business credit yet. But um, all of this isn't bad. It's not the worst I've seen, definitely. You know, talked about a few features and benefits. And like I said, this is all on the website. All right, some um, just stats for who the GoBiz Rewards card is available for, single or multi-owner uh, businesses, small business owners who are ready to start a business account. Look, look they're telling you literally right here. This is for um, small business owners who are ready to start a business account, who have new business accounts. Businesses with many travel requirements or want to expand their business uh, buying power. And that's literally what we want to do, right, is expand our, our capital to be able to um, not only start and scale our business, but invest in income producing assets. All right. Now let's go down to actually how to run this play. I ain't gonna hold y'all. It's definitely, definitely raining over here, man. I was trying to give y'all the vibes, but uh, it looks like it's a rainy morning over in Dubai. I'm, I'm actually 12 hours ahead. So it's Thursday morning at about 8.51 right now. Um, wanted to do it early so it wasn't too late for y'all, but I'm under a little umbrella, so I'm cool right now. Now, when we're ready to apply for our Navy Fed, our Navy Fed Go Biz account, just scroll down. Like I said, single business owners, you're going to have to sign in to apply. Um, as a multi business, as a multi owner business, you do have to complete this beneficial owner form which is essentially just telling Navy Fed who is eligible to sign um, and conduct business on your business owner's behalf. But if you're a single business owner, you don't have to worry about that at all, okay? Now, when we go to apply, like I said, we log in and we go to our secure portal, but you're gonna have to download the application. And this is what the application looks like. We have, our Navy Fed small business loan application, y'all. Now, a few things that I do want to note on here. All right, as we look at this. Listen, man, we, we're going to get into the sauce. I'm going to give y'all all the data points, right? So as we look at this small business loan application, this is actually the application that you use no matter what, um, whether it's, it's the business credit card, whether it's a business loan, a check in line of credit, they do have a lot of products. But as I said, I think the business credit card is probably the easiest one to start out with. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing that we want to go through is the type of loan requested. Um, we're not actually doing a loan from Navy Fed, but I always put $25,000 here, right? Just so they know I want a big bag. A good thing about this is even if you don't get approved for um, 25K, they're going to you know, give you the highest amount that they can approve you for. But what we want to do is go ahead and either check off MasterCard or Visa here. MasterCard or Visa, right? So this is telling them that essentially um, you're actually going for the business credit card right here. That's important. All right. And the rest of the application is pretty straightforward. Right. Business member, you just put your business information. Now. If y'all go back, this is the reason why structuring the business was so important because, you know, we don't want to put like our home address on this application. We want to make sure we don't have our personal cell phone on here when they ask about website address. Right. We want to be able to go ahead and put an actual website address here. 
So like uh, my business consulting company, The Legal Trap, where we help people essentially, you know, start businesses, um, you know, help form the LLCs and things like that. I had a website. So it just makes it look way more official. But neither here nor there. Uh, Section B, go ahead and put your business member information. C, you got your business owners percentage of ownership. If it's only just you, you know, it's 100 percent. Pretty straightforward. Then we have uh, outstanding business obligations. So if you have any other business credit cards or business loans, you put that here. Um, e, we have other business information. Uh, now, a lot of these questions here, like if you first start off your business, these are probably going to be no, right? Because they're asking uh, if you declare bankruptcy, uh, personal bankruptcy, um, any other debts, right? Our whole goal is to make sure all of these are no. And as we go through the rest of the application, it's just pretty standard stuff. This is when they get into your personal information. So just go ahead and put your personal info as um, as we start to actually go through this, right? Really straightforward, y'all. We did the hard part. The hard part was essentially starting the LLC, structuring it the right way, getting into Navy Fed, building the relationship, getting those data points, and then opening the business bank account. That's why we started with that. That was like literally the hardest part now we have the application easy stuff easy stuff y'all all right so only a couple sections and you good at the bottom go ahead initial sign your documentation and you're going to be good to go um now i will say a little bit of a confusing part is actually going into the secure portal but all you got to do is log in once you actually build, uh, get open with the business bank account, the person who walks you through it is going to walk you through going through the portal. So you'll be used to it. Um, download, print this document, sign it, upload it. So if you have a printer, you know, um, scan it in, or you can even now do it with your cell phone, um, scan a copy of the application and upload it to the portal. All right. Now it does take usually between seven to 10 days to hear back from Navy. Um, but pretty much all this is online. It's super sweet. Once you upload it to the portal, they're going to review it. Um, once they make their decision, they're going to one, tell you that they got the application, but when they make their decision, they're going to reach out to you by email and send the card to the business address that you enter. Now, personally, as I said, it took about 10 days and off the rip, uh, Navy fed gave me $25,000. Once they got my application, reviewed it and approved it from the very beginning gave me twenty five thousand dollars of business credit and a great thing about business credit is because these lenders know that businesses usually are doing a lot more transactions um, are usually doing uh, higher spending volumes they already know that they need to give lenders or borrowers need more spending power so they're probably going to give three to five times more of a credit limit to a business than they are an individual. Perfect example is I actually applied, like I said, for that Navy Fed personal Amex card, and it gave me $7,000 off the rip. But a few weeks later, I ran this business credit play, and it came back and gave me 25 bands, right? So that's almost, that's more than three times what I actually got in the personal, y'all. Now, a few data points about Navy Fed, like I said, um, they are, uh, big on business banking uh, relationships, but this Gold Biz Rewards card is a PG card, which means personal guarantee, which means you are going to need to use your personal credit score to get locked in for it. But that's cool. Um, it's really no downside to that, right? Because this person, this this uh, credit line is not going to show up as you spend it and utilize it on your personal credit. Right. They just need to know that the owner of the business is viable to be able to, you know, pay it back if need be. And honestly, you know, the only reason that somebody would not want a PG card is if you're not going to pay them back. And we're not moving like that bag chasers. Right. Our whole goal is to utilize this bag to invest not only in our business and grow operations, but to also um, invest in income producing assets where we get cash flow and we can pay back the debt. So you hear a lot about, hey, no PG this, no PG that. Tell me why a PG matters if we're taking the right steps. We're building our personal credit and the, per, and the credit lines and business don't show up on our personal credit profile. The only reason that it matters is if you plan the default. 
right? And that's, like I said, that's just not what type of time we're on. And um, just honestly, 99% of lenders are going to do a PG. The only way you're not getting a PG, one, lenders like Amex, Chase, they require a PG regardless. But um, even the few companies who don't require a PG, like Divi, they're going to require proof of income, which means bank statements, and as well as two years tax returns to show your business is making money and not just a little bit of money. They need to see hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind is get that no PG out of your mind, y'all. Like it's okay to do a PG. That's how we're going to build our business credit profile and easily get into these uh, lenders fast, right? We don't want to have to wait two, three years to get into a lender. So PG is cool. You do need to do a PG with, um, with your Navy Fed Go Biz card, and it is going to be a hard pull from experience, y'all. Right? Um, that inquiry might might cost you three or four points, but that's cool. That's cool. And literally at this point, guys, you have what you need to get this Go Biz Rewards card. Like I said, they're going to um, reach back out to you in seven to ten days. And if you have your LLC structure, if you have your personal um, relationship with with Navy Fed established personal checking savings uh, uh, account, personal um, nine to five direct deposit setup. If you have a 650 or lower, go ahead and maybe start with a secure card. And if need be, you can do a Navy Fed pledge loan. That's four data points before we even get to the business. On top of that, you have your business banking account. And like I said, you will have $250 in there off the rip. But if you need to wait some time, you can also move some of your nine to five direct deposit over to your business account every other week to increase some cash flow. And as I said, if you do this in two to three and, you know, two to three months of doing this, if you have like a 650 or lower, you should be golden as far as going to get that uh, Navy Fed go biz. But if you're coming in with like a 680 and above, literally, you probably don't have to get a secure card. You don't have to do a pledge loan. You know, um, some of my bag chasers have literally got approved for ten thousand dollars with a six eighty. All right. So let me know, man, if y'all still tapped in. Let me know if this is making sense to y'all. If y'all got any questions, make sure y'all put them in the comments. But pretty much that's going to be the Navy Fed play. And listen, y'all, um, I know, you know, um, we've been dropping consistently on the tube as far as the gyms, business credit. Toro real estate, but listen, I want to be able to give you all the utmost value. So I literally just dropped my um, ultimate business credit playbook, y'all. So this is where I put all my plays in, where I put all the links to be able to start your business, to be able to structure your business. Every resource that I use as far as the virtual office, as far as the toll free numbers, um, all of those links are in my playbook. So literally, if you guys check out the description below, um, you'll see a discount, a discounted price because I literally just dropped this playbook. But this is going to be for my bag chasers who watch this today only. Check out if you want to take this to the next level. And not only just the Navy Fed play, but, you know, I have um, Truist in there. I also have commercial financing for the cars in there. There are everything that I know about business credit I jam packed into the playbook. So. Make sure y'all check that out, man. If y'all got any questions, definitely let me know. Um, but all in all, y'all run this play and use the strategy that I just described in this last hour. And you guys will definitely have, uh, you know, very good chances of getting the Navy Fed Go Biz Business Credit Rewards card. And listen, even if you don't start off with the 25K, as I said, I've seen bag chasers who have had, you know, 680s get $10,000. So if you do your relationship banking, even if you have a 650, 640, like I can easily see you getting four or five, six thousand dollars with Navy Fed. So this is everything that I just mentioned is just a real it's just a reason that I really, really like Navy Fed for my new entrepreneurs and my new business owners. And honestly, I just think it's the easiest play to run is getting your first business credit card. So, you know, I hope you guys got some gems. Um, if you got any questions, let me know. But all in all, that was a Navy Fed play. And you already know what the vibes is. We out in Bali. We enjoying this, this time, this location, this time freedom, all from using this business credit to leverage into income producing assets because my Toro fleet is still back home paying me. My real estate properties are still back home paying me. And literally, you can do the same thing, but you got to start by running these plays. I appreciate y'all tapping in with me, bag chasers. 
Let's go get it.